Dear students, today we will learn the basic concepts of fermentation. We are going to learn what fermentation is, the different types of fermentation and the general steps involved in a fermentation process. We know the word fermentation. It came from the Latin word fervor. It means to boil. This name came from the boiling appearance of fruit juice or malted grain through the action of yeast. The action of yeast generated carbon dioxide bubbles in the fruit juice or malted grain which had a boiling appearance. Biochemically, fermentation means the generation of energy by means of anaerobic catabolism of sugars. While in industrial microbiology, fermentation is the name for any process which is used for the production of any product by the mass culture of microorganisms. It includes both aerobic and anaerobic processes. The commercially important fermentations, there are several commercially important fermentations. They are classified into five major groups. In the first group, there are fermentations in which the microbial cells or microbial biomass will be the product. In the second category, the fermentations include those processes in which the product is a microbial enzyme. In the third category of fermentations, microbial metabolites are the product. And in the fourth type of fermentations, recombinant products are formed. The fifth type of fermentation is a transformation process in which the microorganisms will carry out the modification of a particular compound into a more valuable or more required molecule. Coming to the first type of fermentation, that is fermentations for the production of microbial biomass, two types of microbial biomass may be produced by fermentation. The first type is the production of yeast, where the yeast, the product will be used as inoculum for other fermentations. In the second type, the microbial biomass is used as single cell proteins as animal feed or for food as human beings. The second type of fermentations is the production of microbial enzymes by using microorganisms. Different types of microbial enzymes are produced by means of fermentation. Even though these enzymes are available from animal or plant sources, the microbial fermentation is preferred and highly utilized because the microbial system possesses high productivity and also due to the recombinant DNA technology, it provides an additional advantage of synthesizing enzymes of animal or plant origin by using microorganisms, by using genetically modified microorganisms. The third type of fermentation is where the product is a microbial metabolite. We know microbial metabolites or metabolites are intermediates and products of metabolism. There are two types of metabolites, primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. Primary metabolites are synthesized during the exponential phase of growth. And the synthesis of these metabolites, the primary metabolites, are a part of the normal growth of a cell. The primary metabolites include the intermediates and products of anabolism. These are synthesized as the building blocks for the cell. Examples are amino acids, nucleotides, vitamins, etc. The second type of primary metabolites are the intermediates from catabolism. These are not synthesized as a building block, but these are synthesized in relation to energy production. Examples of these type of primary metabolites are citric acid, acetic acid, ethanol, etc. Coming to secondary metabolites, these are generally synthesized during the stationary growth phase. 
they are not necessary for the normal growth so they are not directly involved in the normal growth but they have a role in the defense system and for making the cells adapt to the changing environments examples of secondary metabolites are antibiotics pigments toxins etc the fourth type of fermentation is where the fermentative product is a recombinant one here the microorganism will be a recombinant that is it will be genetically modified the microbial cells will be introduced with foreign genes from higher organisms either plants or animals this recombinant microbe will be now able to synthesize the particular plant or animal protein and it is known as the heterologous protein through this technique we were able to synthesize human insulin interferon human serum albumin factors h and 9 epidermal growth factor bovine somatostatin etc by using recombinant strains of e coli saccharomyces cerevisiae other types of filamentous fungi etc the fifth and last type of fermentation is the transformation process in this type of fermentation microorganisms catalyze the transformation of a particular compound to a more valuable and more economically important compound microbes behave as catalyst the reactions that are cap that they are capable of catalyzing includes the addition or removal or modification of functional groups at specific sites in the particular compound microorganisms are capable of catalyzing dehydrogenation oxidation hydroxylation dehydration condensation decarboxylation amination deamination and isomerization these types of reactions may be catalyzed by different microorganisms the major advantage of utilizing microorganisms for this type of transformation is that the microbial processes are capable of being operated at relatively low temperatures and pressures when compared to the similar chemical processes also in microbial fermentations there are no need of heavy metal catalyst which may otherwise lead to pollution or other toxic effects examples of transformation processes includes the production of vinegar steroids antibiotics prostaglandins etc so we learned about various types of fermentations the fermentations were categorized into various types based upon the final product there were fermentations for the production of microbial biomass enzymes microbial metabolites recombinant products and there were transformation processes whatever be the type of fermentation in any type of fermentation there are certain general stages and these are known as the component parts of a fermentation in any fermentation there are six basic components they are the formulation of media sterilization production of inoculum growth of microorganism extraction and purification of product and the disposal of effluents the first component is the formulation of media media has to be formulated and prepared for making the inoculum and also medium is required in the production fermenter once the media is prepared we need to sterilize the medium fermenter and all the ancillary equipments required during the fermentation the next component is the production of inoculum and once the inoculum is ready it will be inoculated into the medium in the sterile fermenter and now comes the fourth component the growth of organism in the media in the fermenter we need to provide all the necessary optimum conditions so that the microorganism will grow 
at the fastest rate and the microbial product will be formed at the maximum yield. Once the microbial growth phase is over, now comes the fifth component that is the downstream processing or extraction and purification of the product. The product will be extracted from the spent media from the microbial culture and it will be purified using different techniques. The sixth component of a fermentation process is the disposal of effluents in which the spent media, the microbial cells and all other waste materials generated during the fermentation process will be disposed of safely. This diagram shows the common parts of a fermentation. Using the raw materials, the media will be formulated and after the preparation of medium, it will be sterilized and the media will be used for the development of inoculum. The inoculum will be developed from a stock culture which will be inoculated into a shake flask and further into a seed fermenter. Seed fermenter is a small fermenter used to make up the inoculum and the inoculum will be inoculated into a production fermenter which will be filled with the sterilized media. Inside the fermenter the microorganisms will grow. All the necessary conditions required for the microbial growth will be provided by using the fermenter and once the growth is over we will separate the culture fluid from the fermenter and it will be undergoing cell separation techniques so that the biomass and the supernatant will be separated. If the product is in the biomass, we will collect the biomass and will separate the product from the biomass. Or if the product is in the supernatant, we will use the cell-free supernatant for the product extraction. Once the product is extracted, it will be finally purified and packaged. The effluents or the waste materials released after the fermentation process will be sent for effluent treatment. So these are the major common parts of a fermentation. Formulation of media, sterilization of media, fermenter and other equipments, development of inoculum, growth of microorganisms inside the fermenter, the extraction and purification of the product and finally the effluent treatment. So we discussed about fermentation, different types of fermentation and the common parts of a fermentation process. Hope the class was clear to you. Thank you so much for listening.